your African sister back again. What can I say? Don't I just love going to these African events? I cannot stop myself. Here I am in Congo, actually in New Zealand, but I felt I was in Congo DLC. <laughs> so stay tuned, sit back, and relax. Let's see how the Congolese of New Zealand celebrate. Can you see on this poster, it reads, Paradoxes of the Democratic Republic of Congo. There are two sides to every story. Hmm, I guess you know what that means. For those who do not know where Congo is, it's in Central Africa. The capital city is Kinshasa. Population 69.6 million. About 200 ethnic groups. The major languages French, Lingala, Kiswahili, Kikongo, Siluba. Majority of Congolese are Christians and their currency is called Franc. Hi, welcome guys. I'm here at Congolese Independence Day. I'm here at Titirani in Auckland. Let's see how the Congolese are doing it. You know, Congolese are the best dancers in Africa and are the best musicians. If you've never been influenced by Congolese music, man, you're missing out. Let's check. Yeah. Apologies viewers, I arrived at this event when most of the performances had been done. But I arrived just in time to hear the testimony of a Korean lady who grew up in New Zealand, emphasizing the importance of how language holds culture, as the African proverb says. It takes a village to raise a child. Present and maintain our language. I know for a fact that for the Korean community, the reason I'm fluent in Korean is my parents insisted I maintain my Korean language. I hate On Saturday, like normal school, after I've done a full week of school, normal school, I had to go to Korean school to learn Korean language and Korean culture. I said I hated my parents. Yep, that was when I was a child. I hated them. But when I grew up and realized that the benefit that they've actually given me to maintain my language, to know my culture, and to know my history made me a better version of me if I wasn't the person who actually went to normal school and never attended Korean school. So for all of you parents who are maintaining your language, teaching your children the culture and the history, give yourselves a round of applause. And all of you young people, I hope you may hate your parents now like I did when I was forced to learn Korean language. I hope that when you actually get older, you would appreciate your parents for the effort that they've actually put in. Mm. Just to respond to what em Evelyn actually said, we need to be unified as New Zealanders who are hyphenated because we don't actually forget our history, but we are now in New Zealand. In order to represent you better, we need your voice. I can represent you, but we also need people who will represent your own community. So any one of you who's interested in politics, come and see me. Because I think you can represent your community better than I could. You know your history, you know your language, you know the issues of your own community. Just like I do, of my own community. But the thing is that we also need numbers. We need numbers. And when Evelyn said we need to be united, as a community, as African nations, as ethnic communities, we all need to be united. Because a lot of things that go on in this country, when you first come to this country, after you've actually settled here for a little while, a lot of the problems go right across the ethnic, you know, ethnic community. It doesn't really matter whether you're African or Asian, whether you're Congolese or Korean. Similar issues actually do happen. 
I was told in Parliament to go back home to Korea. I've been in New Zealand for 34 years. I left Korea when I was a child, and people still tell me to go back home to Korea. It does exist. It exists in all forms, and it happens to all of us. And not only do we need to build resilience, we actually need to build confidence. We also need to build support networks. We also need to build the voice. How many of you have actually reached out to your mem member of parliament? Apart from Francois, who actually invited me to meet these events, you know, and Evelyn, who actually tells me what's happening, but have you ever reached out during COVID? You can say, oh, the government doesn't do very much. Well, one of the things you can actually do is help yourself, right? How do you help yourself? You need support, you actually get MPs to actually help you. One of the things that I did, for example, for my own community, the government never had any COVID information in the Korean language. I raised it in parliament, not only Korean language, I said, I, I said in parliament, ethnic languages also need to be provided to the ethnic communities who actually have difficulty in English language. It wasn't provided. It was actually the Korean doctors, nurses, my assistants and myself who translated the COVID information and passed it on to the Korean community, for example. And it happened. I'm sure it actually happened in your own community as well. So we need voices. We need to raise this issue. If you're quiet, nobody knows that there is an issue. If you have an issue, you need to raise it. So I look forward to receiving information, conversation, complaints, also you know, compliments will also be quite nice. If you think we're doing a good job, please tell us, because I think it's always very nice. Thank you for having me. May you have a wonderful Independence Day. Uh, vive la liberté! Thank you so much, Vanessa Lee. We appreciate you coming out tonight. So, um, next we have our tribal dancers. So this is where I'm going to need your participation again. Um, um, Congo, um, actually, here's a fun fact. Congo is actually made up of more than 200 tribes. Um, although we don't have all tribes represented in this room, um, if the song resonates with you and your tribe, if you love it, if you feel it, we invite you to come up on stage and dance. And then the next tribe, I'll call out the next tribe, and then I'll call out the next tribe, but please don't be shy. We have, can we make some noise if you're from the Kibo tribe? Make some noise. Make some noise.
and I also think I want to do music and anything that is about the world. So, uh, Vice President, Mr. Olivier, and we have uh, our treasure, the person who helped us uh, have our books in order. So, Mama Bahati, Bilashaka was there, Kizungu, sorry, and uh, Mama Bahati was there. So, and uh, maybe some of the food that you guys uh, ate tonight comes from her shop. So she, if you want to know where to get uh, some pondu, some good food, so you can see Mama Bahati uh, after the ceremony. So she will give you the address and come and visit. And we have also Mama Genevieve. Mama Genevieve is uh, the woman lead affairs and uh, social committee. So that is us uh, as an executive committee. So we had the support of those young people that I have shown you here. So Daniela, Favor, Irmen Naomi, Aznat, uh, Zoe, Francis, uh, Blessing, and also Holly. So thank you all for the work that you have done. You can never miss food in an African event. We love cooked food. You know, real meals, like solid, mm, not just light. Yeah, so there was Yamachoma. It was mainly Congolese food. And you have, there's a lady called Mama Bahati. Yes, she has a store. So contact the Congolese community if you love Congolese food or any other African foods. Ask us to sing a happy anniversary to the Congo independence, the Congo, and uh, from there we will cut happy birthday, Congo. the 30th of June 1960 so I will ask uh, uh, ladies 
Put your hands together for them, please. Make some noise. Yes, the vice president, vice chairman. Yeah. What, what, what do you have to say about tonight's event? Tonight is a really big event. It's our two years of independence. Yes. And we really hope we have a next time next year so stay up and subscribe to my channel and that is the only way you will know what is happening <laughs> goodbye